Hi guys, it's Clayton again, and today we'll be making paper airplanes. But before you guys start making these, I want to go over something. What makes a paper airplane or an airplane fly? Well, the first thing to consider is aerodynamics. Now, really quick to just demonstrate what this is, I need you guys to help me. So first, we're going to hold our hands out in front of our face just like this, move it back and forth. Notice how you feel the breeze, right? So now we're going to stop and we're going to move it and make like a karate chop motion. Now, this motion, you still feel the breeze, but you feel it much more this way, right? Well, that's aerodynamics. And all aerodynamics, this is how easily, for instance, your paper airplane flies through the wind with the least amount of resistance. Okay, guys, so we just went over aerodynamics. So now what I want to go over is what drag and gravity is. So I'm going to start with drag. Drag is how much air an object pushes while it's either flying or rolling. And pretty much, the less drag you have, the farther your paper airplanes will fly. And we demonstrated that by moving our hands back and forth like this, which you can feel more of a breeze, so it means it has more drag, and like a karate chop, which has less drag. Secondly, I want to go over gravity. Now, we all know what gravity is. That is the force that pulls all objects back to Earth, and unfortunately, our cool paper airplanes are no exception. So to combat this, all we have to do is make our paper airplanes as light as possible. But we don't want to go too light because if they are too light, they will break. Okay guys, we just went over drag and gravity. So now what I want to go over is thrust and lift. We're going to start with thrust. So thrust is the forward movement of your paper airplane. And us as the pilots create that when all we're doing is tossing or launching our paper airplanes. Pretty simple, right? So now I want to go over lift. And lift occurs when the air underneath the wings is pushing up harder than the air above the wings is pushing down. And the difference between those two pressures is what enables your paper airplane to fly. Okay guys, so we just learned what makes a paper airplane fly, so now I think it's time we actually make one. And what we're going to start with today is the dart. So really quick before we start, I want to go over all the supplies. So what I have for you guys is I have a list of notes that help me at my side right here. Pencil, paper obviously, and then I have tape as well. So we are going to start with a piece of paper. And we are going to fold it hot dog style. Now I'll fold it and show you guys what that looks like. Here's hot dog. Hot dog means just two long segments when you fold it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold these two top center lines towards ourselves to that center line we just created. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have our two folds that was towards us into the center line. And after each fold, I take my fingers and I press it down once more just to make it really press down. Okay, so now we're going to fold these two corners right here to the center line. Take your time too, no reason to rush. Okay, so we fold in the top corners right here down into the center line and this is what you should have. And now, you guys are ready to fold in half. So now we have it folded in half, as you guys can see. You should have all your folds on the inside. It should look like this in mine. It might not look like yours. I have two little triangles poking out on both sides. So it's now it's time to create the wings, and we're going to do that by folding our folds that we just made back down away from us. Okay, so before I move on to the second wing, I want to just give you guys an update. So it's going to look like this from the behind. From the side, that's what this looks like. And then look up from the top, you'll know you're doing it right is when you can see reminiscence of other folds you've made.
Once again, I'm using my thumb or any finger to crease down all the folds I've made. Okay, so this is what it should look like once you have both your wings made. It's kind of the crimp down. And we're gonna to wanna to unfold those to the point where they're about, you know, they make a level surface. That's what it's gonna look like. So you're almost done, it's almost ready to fly. Now all I recommend is putting a piece of tape along right here to keep it in place. So when you go to fly it, this piece doesn't fall apart. And really the whole thing doesn't fall apart. Okay guys, so now our piece of tape is in place. The paper airplane isn't coming apart and you finished the dart. So I hope you guys were able to follow that. This one's pretty simple and easier to make. And next we're gonna to get to the bumblebee and into the hunter. We just made the dart, so now it's time to move on to the bumblebee paper airplane. Right, and obviously since we're at the paper airplane, start with a piece of paper. And we're gonna fold this one hamburger style. Okay guys, so as you can see, here's hamburger style. Two bigger segments that aren't as long compared to hot dog style. So now we're gonna to wanna to fold the top corners into the center line. Okay guys, we have just created a fold from the top corner down into the center line. And here's what it looks like. If you guys are facing it, you should be able to see both pieces went open where the top corners and now they've been folded down. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this peak and we're gonna fold it down to about, I don't know, the end of the last fold we just made. So now, just like before, we're gonna take the top corners here and here, we're gonna fold those into the center line. All right guys, so now we just fold it, oh, I'll unfold this. You can see our top corners into the center line and it should make a shape like this. Okay, so now the next step, we're gonna fold about half an inch down from the top away from us. So this is about, if it's on your table, you'll be seeing and you wanna fold the top half inch away from you. All right, it's pretty simple. This is what it looks like if it's going away from you from the side. Fold it down, all done. So now we're gonna fold it in half, but this is one key hint. When you fold it in half, you want that half inch fold you just made to be visible on the outside. All right guys, so once again, what I was talking about is now that you have it folded in half, you should be able to see that half inch fold that you made on the outsides of everything, in both sides. And then you are doing it right if you have two little triangles right here and here on the back side. So now it's time to make the wing. And all we're gonna do is just fold down from the top, just like that. Okay guys, so I have my first wing made, and once again, before I fold the other one, I just want you guys to see what it looks like. So here it is from the side, from behind, and from the front. So now we have our bubble be made. It's ready to fly, but once again, we don't want it to come apart, so we're gonna tape it in place. The bumblebee is all ready to fly. Just to remember, a reminder, our last step was add that one little piece of tape on the center line so it doesn't come apart. Okay guys, so up next, now that we've completed the dart and bumblebee, we have the hunter. Okay guys, so we made two out of three paper airplanes. We got our dart completed and the bumblebee, but now it's time for the hunter. It was built for a long, smooth flight. So, for the last time we're gonna grab a piece of paper and this one we're gonna fold hot dog style. Now we're gonna fold from the top 
down two inches, it'll be a two inch segment down towards you. Okay, so I have my two inch segment. I really don't know if this is two inches or not, just roughly two inches down. So now what we're gonna do is, once again, from the top of our piece of paper, we're gonna fold down to where our last two inch fold ends. kind of what it looks like from the side. All right, so now we have both our folds on top of each other. We're gonna add one more. Once again, down to the edge of both of the creases. Okay guys, so now that we have all three of our folds made, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the top corners down. But instead of like the rest where you fold them towards yourself, you're gonna fold these top corners down and into the back of the piece of paper. Okay guys, so we have our fold, and this was the front of the piece of paper. Just a reminder, we pulled to the top two corners down, away from ourselves. And this is what the end result is. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half along the center line. Okay, pretty simple. And you'll know you fold it in half when those folds we made at the beginning where you fold it on top of themselves are outside and exposed so you can see them. And now the final step is we're gonna take the top we're gonna fold it down, just like the rest, to make our wings. And here's one wing done. All I do is I take this top edge, or the top half, and I fold it down to evenly meet the bottom edge. And I'm just gonna do that one more time for the last wing. Hey guys, once again, third time, wings are made, time for the piece of tape. Okay guys, so the hunter is ready to fly with our piece of tape in the place. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope all three paper airplanes made sense. All right guys, we're just about done, but really quick, I wanna go everything over everything we just covered. So really quick, in order for our paper airplanes to have a long, successful flight, they need to have good aerodynamics, a good combination of drag and gravity, thrust and lift. And fortunately, that combination can look very different according to how you design your paper airplanes. So here, I have the dart. And as you guys can see, it does look like a dart, which means it's skinny and has small wings. That means it has less drag than a larger paper airplane would because the skinnier it is, the less air it has to push through while flying look here at its wings, like I said, they are small, so it does have less lift than other paper airplanes. Now, in order to counteract that, we need just to add, when we go to launch, a little bit more thrust. This paper airplane is designed to fly a little bit quicker as well. Now we have the Hunter. The Hunter is kind of the opposite of the dart. Guys, look here, it's a wider winged plane, so it means it has more lift, more air, pushing it up than this one. And this paper airplane is meant to have a long, smooth flight, so you do not need a lot of thrust when launching your paper airplane. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope all this made sense, and I hope I get to see all of you again for more instructional videos. Bye, guys.